Hello and welcome to or welcome back to Lauren's Legends. I hope you are having a wonderful day. As I will be posting videos, I'm going to do a little bit of a series where I will be posting legends in every state and I will be doing them in alphabetical order. Today, I have three of Alabama's most notorious legends. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. There is a road that goes deep into the thick forest of Gadsden. A very dark legend surrounds it to this day. The story goes that in the turn of the 19th century, a witch that went by the name Torbit lived very deep in the woods in a tiny little shack. For 20 years, people in the town and kids would go into the woods and never come back out. The local people were becoming terrified of course, they start talking and they come up with the witch was killing the people so she could use them for her spells to stay young forever. Around 1939, the mayor had had enough. He was ready to get the truth or put the rumors to rest. He assembled a posse and went into the woods. The posse was terrified, but they were determined as well. Even so, nothing would prepare them for what they would find. The legend states that what they came up on turned their hair white and made the color leave their faces. It is said that they found a pond that was full of blood and body parts of the missing people. Finding the terrible sight, several of the group turned around sick and could not carry on but the remaining brave ones continued on searching for the shack. Going through the deep forest, having no idea what they were gonna come up on, they start smelling an extremely foul odor. They keep going and they come upon a cave. The odor was coming from the cave and only one man was brave enough to go in it. The rest of the posse stayed out. He went in there for some time and then came out running, not being able to speak. After that day, he never spoke again. Seeing this, more people turn back. The rest keep going and going through the dark forest. And then they begin to hear a little bit of a noise, almost as if a wind chime, but it didn't sound normal to them. And then someone sights the shack. When they get close to the shack, they realize what they were hearing were bones. The witch had bones hanging from everywhere she could. She had made her own wind chimes out of them. When they get up to the front, the door opens, revealing a beautiful young woman with flowing black raven hair and emerald eyes. They asked her if she was the witch, and she replied, yes. As soon as she said that, they threw her torches at her, burning her and the shack to the ground. To this day, it is said that if you walk down Wooden Hines Road late at night, the moment you let your guard down, a beautiful woman with black hair and emerald eyes will rush at you out of nowhere saying, I sold my soul to the devil. Would you walk down that road late at night? In Huntsville, there is one of the oldest cemeteries in Alabama. It was founded in 1822. It is also the largest sitting on over a hundred acres of land. This cemetery is officially known as Maple Hill Cemetery. This location has become very popular with ghost hunters due to so many reports of children's spirits playing there at night. Investigators have captured many pictures, videos, and voice recordings. The most spiritually active place on the entire cemetery is actually the playground. The playground was built many, many years ago 
And the idea was when the adults were there visiting their loved ones, it was a place for the children to go and entertain themselves. The legend is that so many children were buried there that they also used the playing room. The activity really ramped up when the city decided to take out the old playground stating that it was no longer safe and they were concerned that the rust and everything would hurt children. When they took it down, the local people actually partitioned the state and had them come and build a new playground. The city was bringing out the new equipment and then they realized that the field to the right of the playground held a very dark secret. In the 1940s, there was a child serial killer that used that field as his dumping grounds for the bodies of his victims. To this day, people report swings moving, spectral figures, kids laughing, <laughs> and the sounds of little feet running across the playground. Could you go out there overnight and stay? On a hot July afternoon in 1854, farmer Orion Williamson was sitting on his front porch with his wife and children enjoying the afternoon. Looking across the fields, he noticed that his horses were bright in the blazing sun. So he got up deciding to move them to another pasture that would be in the cover of shade from the trees. His wife and children saw him get up and walk right in front of them into the field going across it to where the horses were. As he was, there were two neighbors that were walking up the road that ran in front of the farm. They see him raise his hand and wave at them. And when he goes to drop his hand down, he disappears in front of them and the neighbors. Everyone, including the neighbors and the family, ran exactly to where he was in the field and they found nothing the grass was even gone of where he was standing. A search party of over 300 men were immediately formed, bringing out bloodhounds to search for him. The weird thing was the bloodhounds could follow his scent from the front porch, but only to that spot. They would stop and sit as soon as they got there. They couldn't follow him anywhere. They then decided to dig up the ground thinking, we are looking for a sinkhole, maybe he fell into it. But when they dug, they only hit bedrock. It was rock all over the ground. There was nowhere that he could have gone. The search party continued to look deep into the night and they found absolutely nothing. No hat, no shoe, nothing. According to legend, for years to come, Mrs. Williamson and her son would hear his voice calling out to them for help. This, of course, in a frenzy, would have them run out looking and searching for him in the field to find absolutely nothing at all. As the weeks and then the months and then the years went by, the voice would grow fainter and fainter and fainter until it was but a whisper. And then one day it disappeared completely, never to be heard again. A future author was one of the many people that became fascinated with this case and would actually go out to the farm to see where he had disappeared for himself. The author, who was also a scientist, was named Ambrose Bice. He decided that he would do absolutely everything he could to try to figure out this mystery, especially when the judge declared Orion dead. Ambrose would actually end up writing a book about this with all of his theories included, calling it the difficulty crossing the field. Two of his main theories was that Orion had gone into a spot of universal other or that he had gone into a different dimension. That would explain possibly why Mrs. Williamson and her son had heard his voice for so long. Maybe the veils between the dimensions had finally closed up and he couldn't get through anymore. Ironically, Ambrose himself would actually go missing in 1914. 
Did he find the answer of where Orion went? There are your three Alabama legends. Please let me know what you thought about these stories. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I hope you have a great day. Thank you.